Hey everyone, welcome back to Homegrown Passion. Well, earlier this week we went to Crop King. I had to pick up an order. I needed some more nutrients and I wanted to get the perlite for my strawberries going and talk about strawberries. They're trialing a brand new strawberry system there that has this gutter and all this uh, tape stuff to grow the leaves over. And it's really a cool system. You guys are really gonna be impressed with it. I'm, I'm thinking, wow, I wish I would've waited and got something like this. And also with talking with Nathan from Crop King, he gave me some ideas on a growing medium mixture for these strawberries, so it's really cool. So you guys gotta see what's going on there. And talking about Nathan and Crop King, they have the best grower school because we did go there and it was really fun and I do talk there. And I talked to Paul, who's the president and owner of Crop King, and he talked about why you should go to grower school. And it's good for commercial growers and even the hobby grower because it gives you a really good insight of what hydroponic growing entails and how to check for things, you know, what nutrients are, what pests there are, different pest management, just, you know, what kind of mildews and powdery mildews and stuff get on your plants. It's just all kinds of information out there and they give you an idea where you can find the information from. So I did a little interview with Paul and talked to him and with Nathan about that. So it's a kind of an interesting video to show you the ins and outs of the grower school. And at the end of the video, you're going to see us loading up all the nutrients and the perlite we got from them so I can get my strawberries started here in my high tunnel. So I'm here in the Crop King greenhouse. They have a new system here for strawberries, and Nathan's going to come over and tell you all about it. It looks pretty cool. I'm interested to see how it works. All right, so this is our experimental strawberry system. So what we've got going on here is that we've got a, I believe it's a 16 liter meter wave bucket. So basically this bucket is a meter long. And what we're doing is we've got 10 plants in each bucket as we go through down through this row here. And it goes through and it sits on top of a water collection trough, right? So this water collection trough all down the sides has got holes drilled in it that goes through and collects the leach water that goes through and drains out the bottom of the bucket. And then that goes through and takes it down to the end of the greenhouse and out through the drains, just like the same way we do with our beta bucket systems. So, yeah, that's it in a nutshell. That this gutter goes through, and maybe I can pull this apart for you guys to look at. So if you go through and you see that we basically have a top gutter on here that goes through and runs the whole way down the length of the greenhouse, that goes through and collects all of that runoff water to take it back to the end of the greenhouse. Oh, the question was asked about the tape here. So the idea behind the tape is, is what we'll do is we'll train the leaves of the plants to grow over the top of the tape. And then as the uh, berry flowers go through and come out and the berries start to set, we'll train those to go underneath the tape so that our leaves are basically on top, the berries are on bottom that then goes through and makes harvest much easier. We're not having to go through and fight with everything all tangled in the leaves to go through and harvest the berries. So we get a questions about the media a lot. So the media that we're using here is a 25% peat, 25% core, 50% perlite mix. Um, that's through recommendations from OSU. Dr. Cherry Kubota uh, has previously was at Arizona, uh, Arizona State and has basically for the past 10 years plus been doing tons and tons of research on uh, CEA strawberry production and their recommendation is to go through and basically do that 25 feet, 25 core, 50% uh, perlite mix. So Nathan, we get a lot of questions about automating systems. Mm -hmm. Will you tell everyone why it's good to automate and what you guys do here and put together? Right, so I would say that it is good to automate once you get to a certain scale, right? If you're going through and you're growing just a handful of plants for self-use, then it, you know, the cost to go through and automate doesn't just, isn't justified by the cost, right? But once you go through and you get to that commercial side of things and you're dealing with you know, thousands of plants positions and you know, you know, 90 to 100,000 heads a year, then now all of a sudden the cost of automation goes through and becomes more justifiable because it's over the course of tens of thousands or 100,000 heads of lettuce instead of you know, a couple hundred. So the, but the reason that, automation is going to go through and be beneficial is because we're going through and we are constantly monitoring our pH, we're constantly monitoring our EC, and we are going through and we're making adjustments to those in real time. Instead of going through and doing it manually where we're maybe checking on it once or twice a day, 
taking a, taking a reading with our hand meter, going through and adjusting our pH and EC once or twice a day, and then that goes through and fluctuates over the course of the day. We don't have as much consistency. We have this feast famine, right? To where we go through and everything's where it wants to be, and then the pH increases and the EC goes down, right? Then we go through and we bring that back in and you just have these big waves instead of when we automate it, we go through and we level those curves out. So we put these plants in a position to not be underneath as much stress. Now for the hobby grower, mm -hmm. what would you suggest for them? So the hobby grower, going through and basically doing that manual adjustment of your pH and EC, right? Get yourself a good pH EC meter that you're going through and calibrating on a regular basis and then going through and making sure that you're keeping that pH and EC um, at least checking it once a day right so if you can go through and get it checked more times than that to go through and level out those those feasts and famines that would be even more beneficial but at least going through and checking your ph and ec once a day and bringing it inside our ideal parameters okay. okay and i always get all kinds of questions about how to do things and how to grow and what nutrients to use you know i'm far from the expert so i thought i'd bring you to the expert and he can explain why you should come here to grower school so paul why should someone come to grower school Thanks, Katie. That's a good question. So whether you're getting into this for a hobby or whether you're trying to do this on a commercial scale as a business like you and Doug did, it's going to cost you a decent amount of money. It's, it's not a cheap hobby and it's certainly not a cheap business to set up. And so what we try and do at the two day grower training workshop is to really give you a 30,000 foot view of what you're going to experience as a commercial grower. We tell everybody, you're not gonna leave being an expert grower or even being able to do it from those two days. But as you get into it, the things that you go through in that two day grower school are gonna be like, ah, that's why they told us about that. And what we really like is to tell people that if, if you come back in your first year of being a grower, you'll get the most out of grower school then because then you've been touching and using the different products and you've been doing things because it's what you were told to do, but you don't necessarily know why. And that's what we want to try and be able to apply is the why do you do it the way that you do it. Um, and so that's really what we do is just give you an ex experience of what it'll be like. Um, if you're getting into this in a commercial way, you're probably going to be your own boss. So you need to spend some time in a greenhouse to know that you're going to enjoy that environment. Because if you, if you hate how it feels in a greenhouse and you have to wake up every morning and go out there, you're not going to enjoy this. And it also gives you a bit of an exposure to who's going to help you and be your support for as you get into this. And so making that relationship with Nate and with Jeff and with Zach is really beneficial for when you're at home and you're like, Oh, I don't want to sound like a dummy, but I have this question. Like, we want you to call us and we want to be able to help you. And so those relationships are all part of it. Um, and if it's a cost issue, you know, we do have a fee for it. But if you move forward and buy a commercial package, we give you that money back. Um, it's really about an education experience and we feel that it's extremely valuable. Like Paul said, the back, people in the back room here at Craft King have been phenomenal. I've made relationships with everybody from Karen, who I buy my, gets all my supplies, to Nate and to Jeff, any grower question I have. If they can't answer it, they find out the answer for me. It's just been a great support for me. I've been growing for eight years now and I couldn't have done it without them. Thanks, Katie. <laughs> Nathan's gonna talk about the curriculum that they go over here at Grower School, so you have an idea what to expect that you're gonna learn when you come here. So over the course of two days, we go through and we start off by an intro to uh, hydroponics. So what hydroponics is and what are the benefits of it and why we go through and consider using hydroponics and why you wouldn't go through and consider using hydroponics. And then that'll go through and roll into um, the greenhouse structure and the different greenhouse components. And then we'll go over a section on greenhouse construction, how you need to go through and grade your site, make sure that your posts are all square and plumb and all that fun stuff. And uh, then we'll start getting into the nuts and bolts where we actually talk about our NFT systems, our beta bucket systems for your vine and your uh, leafy green crops. And then we go through and get into pests and diseases and then selecting crops for your greenhouse as well amongst a whole bunch of other things, microgreens. So Paul always described it as kind of this 30,000 foot view of what CEA hydroponics is to kind of basically get you an idea do you really want to go through and take on this project of being a hydroponic greenhouse grower
you guys like seeing my fennel here. We've got probably another month to go, but it's looking pretty cool. So I hope you guys like today's video. And like always, please leave me questions, comments, or suggestions down below. And we'll see you next video. Bye.